Let's have a little look at it. Look, there's no trampolines. 80 foot Fontainebleau, no trampolines. Isn't it strange? We bought a neglected catamaran, sold our beautiful home and quit our good jobs to sail around the world. Crossing oceans and discovering hidden bays, laughing and learning on the way. Join us as we cruise down the Atlantic coastline towards our first ever ocean crossing. Bye bye Port Alona. Bye bye what? Port Alona. <laughs> bye bye K Shum. They are incredibly noisy, aren't they? Park on the mud again. Yeah, they park here. Look, they park there, and then the tide goes out, and they get they get they get totally beached, and then they sell their product directly to the locals. Little sandwich place there. Does amazing, amazing, huge, amazing sandwiches. Um, chicken and chips, or beef burger and chips, or whatever. And this side over here, this is the touristy side. Okay, so there's the entrance or exit of Port Alona at Les Sables, and this is the big Sable. The uh, sea is in high tide, so you can't see the beach too clearly. It goes all the way around, it's a beautiful big beach, very active, lots of stuff going on all the way around up to here. And there's some rocks, there's a, a Devil's Passage or the Hell's Passage. Um, but yeah, fun place to come, very busy, very busy, very crowded. So the battery died there, I'm not quite sure how much you got of that, but we have just left Les Sables and Dourlon and we are going to... La Rochelle. La Rochelle. La Rochelle. And you can probably tell we've got our jackets on. It's the 4th or 5th of August. It's cold. Freezing. Not sure what's going on with this crazy weather. But we've got... I won't go out there, it's too windy for you. Um, we just had a squall of about 25 knots. We're getting used to these squalls, aren't we now? Um, the sea state, as you can see, is lots of, lots of white, white horses. I think we've got wind against tide at the moment. Um, but we've been rocketing along. I mean, we're only doing six knots now, but we've been doing up to eight, we even touched ten at one point, didn't we? we did. But uh, we've got two reefs in the main. There it is, it's flapping around because I've taken off the uh, what I, my makeshift downhaul because um, we have no kicker. And we've put two reefs in the foresail now, simply because we, uh, we like to sail cautiously. Um, ahead there is a bridge which links the island of Ile de Ré to the mainland, and behind it is a big commercial port. We have the option of pulling in there if we feel unable to proceed. And also here is uh, on the Ile de Ré is a place called, uh, what's it called? Oh. St. Michael, yeah, little Port St. Michael, um, where we could possibly take shelter if we choose to. Um, that all seems good. The, the swell will obviously increase as, as we get under the bridge because it will be coming from the Atlantic again because it's the island that's breaking as well, so it will get a bit choppy. But we've got to go under the bridge, around the corner and into La Rochelle. So that bit there, well, I think we still should be okay. Anyway, we're in, uh, we're in awful land at the moment. 20, 20, 27 meters. But they have to go through this shallow patch to get to the deep patch, so I guess we're okay. We're, um, I am Paranoid Pete. Paranoid Pete? Paranoid Patrick. Right up to the feet. Let's get this feeling nervous. Maybe we're going right for the green cardinal. Yeah, because I want to get around the red one. Right, I get that, but going into the green. Okay, well, we've got... Do you see the green cardinal? Very well. Why is... Very bouncy. Apparently, that's 30 meters. 
but do you not think we should aim towards the center of the bridge? Yeah, I do. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, how much more bouncy can you get? Maybe that's not funny. Bridge. Good morning. We quarter past seven in the morning. And what a sunrise. Beautiful here in La Rochelle. Look at that sunrise. In what is, I've been told, Europe's largest marina. And there are boats literally everywhere, everywhere, including this huge 80 foot Fontaine Peugeot. Let me just take you up the front. It's absolutely monstrously big. Ooh. Looks like they're getting ready to take it somewhere today. Not sure it's for me, but it's huge. But this is the gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous setting of La Rochelle. We went to the old town last night, it was very pretty. This marina, there's literally just nothing, nothing but boats. But it's a great place if you want to come. It's a catamaran mecca. And there's just so many boats. I mean, we've got Fontaine Peugeot's, plenty, Outremer's, Barley's, Excess, Naughty Tex. They're just everywhere. So um, it's, quite, it's quite cool actually, it's quite cool. So, um, yeah, I'm being quiet because people are still sleeping. I'm gonna go and head back. And, uh, yeah, there's just boats everywhere. It's a fantastic place to be, especially if you like catamarans. That is monstrous. If you think about it, this is a 42 foot catamaran. That's twice the size. I mean, it's ginormous. I mean, it is absolutely huge. And of course, you've got the Neil Trimerangs, you've got the Paracats, you've got the Barleys. I mean, this place is an absolute mecca. We're gonna have a closer look. <laughs> I'm just amazed. I've not been able to get on it yet. In fact, I haven't tried, but I'll see if I get a sneaky step on it. But it's, it's absolutely huge. Let's have a little look at it. Look, there's no trampolines. 80 foot Fontaine Peugeot, no trampolines. Isn't it strange? And it's walls. I mean, it's, it is a wall, isn't it? It's like a fortress. And it's got these, I mean, really. It's huge. Absolutely ginormous. Did you know that? <laughs> Wow. There's, there's the uh, the Neil Trimaran. Yeah. So I must say, I'm actually a little disappointed in La Rochelle. At least, Minim, this is uh, Port Minim in La Rochelle. It's Europe's biggest marina. The Cap and Tannery are not particularly helpful. You can't have parcels delivered and they've only got two tiny little caddies to help you get stuff from the boat and to the boat. And you have to leave your passport or driving license to borrow them. Very restrictive. Um, and outside the Capitanery, it's just a big car park with a lot. To its credit, there is, on the corner here, a little sea taxi, sea bus, that travels all the way into the old town. And that takes about, I don't know, we took that the other day, it takes about 15 minutes to get there, which is quite nice. It's quite a nice little electric bus and smooth ride. And the old town's much nicer, uh, but it's bustling, bustling, bustling. But this part, this part of, this part of town is dilapidated. So much 
activity around her and it's been quite awesome to watch there must be about 20 people on her and yeah off to can they go so they're gonna have to go down past Gibraltar through Gibraltar so they'll go past all the orcas we actually don't know actually her name is there now um, they put a name on but yeah so much attention on that boat but like they said we were on the ferry going over to the old town the other night in La Rochelle and the ferry guy was telling everybody that that's one of the largest and the most expensive and there she goes her maiden voyage I guess in, oh, hello we're in the Atlantic uh, big Atlantic Ocean a little bit of swell this is the Ile uh, de l'Oleron, uh, I think that's what it's called, Oleron. And on the other side is uh, La Rochelle, which is where we just left. We have got full sails up. A big mainsail. Front sail flapping around because it's in the shade or the shadow of the mainsail itself. Even though we've got about 14 knots true wind. Yeah, now we're, we're, we're going along. We've got another three hours until we get to the end of land. Uh, or not the end of land forever ever but to the end of that point of land and then we go up a channel to Medoc or Rouen um, and this is a monumental day really um, because we are on our way to leave France we are going to stop off in a, in a couple two more maybe three more French ports but we are well and truly on our way now to uh, Spain to head down to the Canaries and join the Ark And so our first night passage, just the two of us, begins. It's 8.30 and Brendan's just gone down to have a sleep. He'll be asleep for a couple of hours. My job is to keep us away from the land. Quite big swell going on all day today. We've been on the go now for 12 and a half hours and we probably have another uh, probably another 15 hours depending on the wind to go so we'll get in about lunchtime tomorrow and it's beautiful a little apprehensive about our first night sail long long sail just the two of us but we've got to we've got to do this so Oh, that's not gonna work. Cool. All right. All right. So um, I'm on my watch. Within our first uh, series of night watches, we set off from La Rochelle. We were going to head into Royan or Midoc, but we've decided to keep going to uh, saint jean de Luz, which is over 140 nautical miles. It's an overnight passage and uh, it is pitch black out there. Um, we are, we have been doing an amazing um, speed on the boat. We were doing seven knots at one point quite comfortably um, and it's all downwind sailing, perfect with the, with the waves and the swell. Excuse me. So we decided to carry on and take advantage of the wind rather than to motor down. Um, and there, yeah, this is my this is my first night passage. I'm on watch until midnight, and then Janine gets up for a couple of hours, and I go to bed. Um, yeah, it seems to be working quite well. We've got the radar switched on. Um, probably won't see it. It's there. And then we've got our, all our navigation is very dim, so we've got our night vision. I'll just put this light on so you can see me while I'm recording it. So I'll turn that off otherwise I can't see a thing. And the stars, by the way, the stars are beautiful. I think I can see the Milky Way. If I can try and show you, I will. Let me turn this off. Ooh. There we have our night, night stuff. If you look out here, I don't think you'll see on the GoPro, but Oh my goodness, there are so many stars. I'll try and enhance it for you. 
Oh, that was a bit scary. Um, a bit worrying, actually. We lost GPS fix and AIS. Um, got a couple of alarms to tell me so, which was good. But I couldn't figure it out. So I had to restart the Axiom plotter. Um, seems we've picked up the GPS fix and the AIS now. Um, but the other instruments have lost course over the ground. Um, the winds are, well, the winds continue to be favourable. Um, we've got tide against us now, um, so the boat speed is slowed down to 3.8 knots. Um, the swell is back and forth, they're just rolling around, which is alright. Um, but yeah, we're making, making good progress. So we've had a successful night. Um, two hours on, two hours off. Uh, so I had three sleeps, Jimmy had three sleeps um, as we went through the night. We dropped the main as you can see. We left the foresail up until the last moment because we were still getting quite a lot of nice down downwind uh, wind, uh, wind from the, from the back. Um, but this morning it's just before the sun rose, the wind dropped to zero and we, um, we ended up with, with no wind at all so we had to drop the sail. We put the engine on, um, which does two things, it's charged the batteries up a little bit because they've dropped down to 83% and we also heat up the water so we've had a shower while en route. Um, so yeah, we've done two loads of washing, had the dishwasher on, a little unusual for sailing but what we've done as well yesterday so obviously the solar panels will pick up and kick in now the sun's up but um, yeah using 17% of our batteries for radar and everything else overnight and all the navigation autopilots and everything else kettles that we use I think that's okay so we are heading down the French coast which is rather undescript it's just one long French coastline Oh. Dolphins playing over there. You see them jumping? <laughs> He's coming over to see us. Yeah, yeah there's two of them. Oh, yes. oh wow. Mammy. Mammy. a few of them. Loads. Look, over this way as well. The reason we're here is because this is 20 meters deep. That's 2,000 meters deep. Obviously the shore is zero, but this line here is 20 meters deep. And we're trying to avoid our little friends, the black and whites, um, who live in the deeper water. This is Beirets or Bayonne. And over there under the mountains, we've actually finally seen some mountains. It's just been flat, 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 flat like this for days, it feels like. And now we start to see some mountains, which is beautiful. And then Saint Jean de Luz is just over there. We're going to drop the anchor in the bay and behind the break wall, we hope. Um, a little anxious about that, but that's the plan. Uh, we have to put the sails away, get the boat ready, and then we can have a We're Here beer. Yay. Yeah, We're Here beer. What a major achievement. It's huge. And we are just, just on the Spanish border. And we can see the Spanish mountains over there. And the clouds in the mountains. The greenery, the lush, everyone's been telling us northern Spain is just beautifully. Just dropped the anchor. We're not sure whether we're allowed, whether we'll get told off. But we will copy that guy there, true north. And we will anchor here. So yeah, so this is Saint Jean de Luz. Yeah. The mountains in the background and the sunset. After a 36 hour sail we're both naked and we're gonna put our feet up, have a shower and uh, maybe have a glass of wine.